Well, for for your strategy, the organic part is pretty clear to me. You know, you can look at what the organic standards are, and if you want to be certified organic, you know, you meet them. The regenerative is less clear to me. So when you when you talk about kind of regenerative conversion, what does that look like for you? Is it I assume it's practice based or kind of what what are farmland LPs standards when it comes to regenerative agriculture? Great question. And I love that you ask this of people because there's so much greenwashing in the space and it's so important. And so by contrast, the thing that we love about organic agriculture and the organic standard is that it's federal law. It is codified. It has independent board overseen by the USDA. There's third-party validators, certifiers certified by the USDA. It is federal law. If you violate those standards and anyone can look at those standards, you're going to jail. And there are people who go to jail for violating the organic standards. How regenerative as a term really got started is that people weren't happy with organic uh, to some extent for not really focusing on, there's a certain, you can, you can do organic agriculture kind of a little bit in a factory way where you're not really like a lettuce, where you're doing multiple crops of lettuce in a year and you're not really rotating the soil. You're just doing a bunch of inputs on that land. It's not really beneficial in the spirit of organic agriculture. So they started talking about regenerative agriculture as a way of really focusing on healthy soil biology and improving the soil and improving the ecosystem. And unfortunately, they didn't copyright or trademark the term. And now you have people who basically set up their own, literally their own standards organization that you write them a check and they will call you regenerative agriculture. And they're doing the worst agricultural practices on the planet. They're monocropping corn for five, 10 years, not rotating out to soy, putting the worst chemicals on the land. And they're basically just saying, well, you know, our neighbors are doing that too. So it's regionally appropriate. When we talk about regenerative agriculture, number one, we say organic comma regenerative agriculture, but the regenerative side is really important to us. It actually is the foundation of what we do. It's really shifting from chemical based agriculture to shifting from chemistry to biology as the kind of underpinning practices for how we're managing the land. So that means crop rotations. It means cover cropping. It means really focusing on the soil biology, the mycorrhiza, for example, and blueberries, which we can talk for an hour about. But by focusing on healthy soil biology and proper crop rotations, cover cropping and all of that, getting the soil biology right, it actually starts with getting the right plant in the right piece of ground over the right period of time. So we talk about diversification in space in any one year and also diversification across time. So doing crop rotations over time, that's how you get good fundamental regenerative agriculture. Then it becomes very easy for us to get certified organic because we have that foundation of healthy soil biology. A number of months ago, we got 5,000 acres certified organic in three hours. So we keep good records and it becomes very easy like that. The people who are doing very much conventional agriculture, but then calling a single practice regenerative, that's where it becomes kind of greenwashing. If they can get certified organic easily, great. That, that to me puts them in the right realm. If not, then they've got a lot of explaining to do and it really becomes caveat emptor. The person who's looking at that or listening to them make those claims really has a lot of questions to ask. Number one would be crop rotations. What what kind of crop rotation patterns are you doing? If you're doing corn, corn, soy, you're going to have a challenging case with me to call that regenerative agriculture, no matter what practices you're doing. Those are not natural, sustainable crop rotations in the world. And when you have kind of investors in your funds say, you know, that sounds great, but like, where do we get the return on investment on that? Uh, you know, where does the ROI come from in terms of the, you know, organic I get because I could see the clear organic premium that might exist. But for regenerative, how are we getting a good return on investment like that? And how do we track to make sure like we're, we're doing, we're making progress? Great question. The 
healthy soil biology results in healthier plants, greater plant growth, greater plant yield, and higher quality fruit production or whatever crop is being produced. You can just understand that a healthy plant is going to produce more and better crop on it. And the question is, how do you do, is it healthier to grow that crop as one crop? If you grow tomatoes in the same ground for five years in a row, that's not going to work well. It's going to fail. You absolutely need to do those crop rotations. If you grow tomatoes in 20% of your ground and you rotate over a five-year period, you're going to have a great healthy tomato crop. The challenge is, how does one farmer operationally, from an operational efficiency standpoint, grow all those tomatoes. You know, it's easy for them to grow all those tomatoes at one time, harder for them to grow five different crops in the ground, one of those in tomatoes, and then rotate that ground. That's where our business comes along, which is we said, hey, how do we get all the benefits of regenerative agriculture, having good, great crop rotations, and the operational efficiency? And our solution was scale. So you just scale up the operation so that that 20% of the land that's in tomatoes, well, that 20% of the land becomes 100 or 200% of what a normal tomato farmer's operation would be. So that's where we have 4,000 acres, 6,000 acres. If we're leasing out 400, 500 acres of land as organic tomatoes, an organic farmer is absolutely happy with that thrilled with being able to do that kind of scale, especially because they're going to be able to rotate around every year on it. They're not going to have that monocropping issue over a five-year period. So that's where by bringing organic and regenerative agriculture to it at scale and us managing this farmland essentially as multi-tenant commercial real estate on that land, having multiple farmers on that ground, each one specializing in tomatoes or sweet corn or grains or organic grains or other crops, and us managing that crop rotation, that's where it makes sense. That's where it really creates a lot of value. And that's fundamentally expressed in us increasing rents from $300 an acre to $750 an acre. Those farmers are making more profits on that land. And all of our organic vegetable ground is leased out. The farmers all want more land. We're actually out of land. We launched fund three so that we could buy more farmland so that we could convert it to organic and have more land to lease to our farmers. So that's the ROI that our investors appreciate. And it's really win, win, win for everyone.